now. All right. So, when we last gathered, the party had a, uh, a bit of an uncomfortable, unsettling situation that they had to deal with, mostly by Osiris's single-handed doing. She took particular issue with how Drava was conducting herself, so to say, in a manner of assisting people and helping people be free and be themselves, while all at the same time severely holding herself back from what she actually is and suppressing the creature inside of her. And so Osiris, deciding to take matters into her own hands, chose to force it out of Drava, to which it was not the, quote, correct way to do things, because the the longer the situation went on, eventually, Yashu and Henry became aware of the situation, and Osiris forcefully fed Drava her own blood, which, because she hadn't had any in so long, she went into a blood-induced frenzy, to where she needed to be incapacitated so that way she would chill out. And as Henry and Yashu were trying to get Drava to calm down and relax, Osiris, unapologetically, with no regret or remorse, watched the situation unfold until something clicked in her head that led to her choosing to take a stand and assist in the situation. Then, as the two questioned our Phoenix friend, so to say, she explained her reasoning and explained that she would not apologize for what she done because when she did when she did, she also freed Drava from her curse. So that way, she no longer has to feed. She no longer is fatigued and her skin no longer burns by running water and she will not be uh, incapacitated if pierced by a blasted wooden stake. And even though she didn't particularly enjoy what happened to her, while Drava refused to verbally admit it, she is, in a sense, thankful that she doesn't have to deal with her vampirism tendencies anymore. And once that was all said and taken care of, Zeril, Diablos, Garland, and Francesca all burrowed themselves into her office to, one, relay a bit of information about the coming day's events, and two, to inquire about what all the thrashing about was. Diablos and Francesca also admitted that they knew Drev was a vampire the moment they laid eyes on her, they just didn't say anything because they assumed that everyone else knew. Once that was all said and done, though, Henry went to go pick up that special request order from Cuban that he made a few days ago, only to discover that Cuban was in the process of being attacked by some of his competitors in the Market Guild. They were very quickly and swiftly taken care of and dealt with. And then the group retired back to their hotel rooms for the night, and then further went back to the astral space to finish the trial, only to come to realize that they had passed long ago. It's just that Ifrida was all too impressed with how far they had come and what they were becoming capable of, so she didn't want the fight to end. But with that out of the way, our story will continue. Our heroes have come across newfound power and new heights that are slowly but surely coming into reach yet again. And now, we resume. I will play... Mm, let's play this.
So, <clears throat> now that our little trial and whatnot is over, uh, don't you guys have stuff to do outside of here? That we do. Well, uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here in the portal slash door is, you know, right over there. There's your way out. <laughs> I was going to ask, uh, how do I wake up from here? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, good job, you two. Congratulations. I could feel uh, a dangerous aura coming from the both of you. I'm going to see my way out. Not only do you feel uh, a newfound aura coming from them, if you look at them just hard enough, where they are now, they are very faintly glowing. Almost if you can see residual energy, kind of just not necessarily shooting out of them, but kind of coming out of them all wispy-like. Mm. And as you make your way towards the exit, you see that Dreva is examining herself and coming to terms with the newfound power that now courses throughout her body. And you can see that she is quite excited over this as well. Henry's just playing with a little bit of fire in his finger. And it's coming out bigger than he usually had. I whistle at the both, at the both of them. Uh, your whistle catches Draver's attention, and she follows behind you, but she's still like examining herself as she walks. Like she is completely enthralled with what just happened to her. I look back at her, and I just remind her, "Watch your step." I know you're excited. You say that just before she nearly falls into the water, and then she actually starts paying attention again. Henry starts making his way with Igni. Still playing with the fire. And as you two, I'm not going to warn you at all. I'm just going to warn Drava. <laughs> as you two make it to the ex... Well, you three, rather. Or, four. Wow. As you all make it to the exit, Frida and Mayor say to the both of you come back anytime you want to undergo a new trial or um and mayor interrupts her come back when you are eligible for a new trial i raise an eyebrow eligible yes because the only other person here that could take one is you yashua and i will tell you now that battle will be with me. And when, mm. he, when he says that, his yellow eyes flicker to a golden sheen for just a quick moment. And I ask you to perform a charisma save. I hope I have a high roll because I actually want to match his energy. <laughs> charisma save. Uh, where's my dice? Here they are. Alright, we both got a 17. So we match each other's energy? Yep. Awesome. Oh, I can't wait for that. Alright. So, you all step through the portal, and before long, mm -hmm. you all find yourselves awake in the hotel, in each of your respective rooms. Ah. Uh, dips on this room. No, wait, that's Henry's room. This My one. room's the top room. Yeah. Yeah, the one with the broken door. <laughs> 
Didn't you pay to get it fixed? Yeah, but it's still missing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, let's say it's about, uh, let's say 7 a.m. You want to wake up and the glowing effect that was present in the astral space is now gone, but you still feel the newfound effects. Henry's in pain because he had to sleep on the couch because they didn't want him on the bed. Damn. Put on a couch already. What a shame. Damn, dude. <laughs> You're... You, you're living the life of a rock star already. Slipping on the couch. My character is like, over here, just brushing his teeth. Okay. Henry's still trying to sleep. We'll say that... Drava... is up, <laughs> hopped in and out of the shower, and is just, uh... getting some minor necessities in order as she steps out of her room. Yeah, we'll have Drevo come get us this time. Alright. Just brushing my hair, just washing my face. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's say that... I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll see whose room she goes to first. Okay. Alright. For lore-wise, lore Yashua just has flip-flops and just... Sleeping pants, no shirt, and his hair is messy right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote a four, so we're going to Henry's room first. Drava knocks on the door. There's no door. <laughs> There's just curtains there. <laughs> Let's say that she pokes her, her hand through the, the curtains print. and she assumes that you are awake and she motions with her hands hey come on let's go let's get to let's get to doing some stuff today but because you did say that you are not sleeping she is going to very cautiously enter into your room to see you on the couch, seemingly writhing in pain, and the entire bed being taken up by your pixie friend. <clears throat> well, this is, uh, this is an interesting sight to see, I guess. Igni flies over, waving to Drava, as Henry's just well trying to get comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she waves back in response. Oh, good morning. How did? You... Oh, I'm, 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 I'm assuming you slept well, since you had the whole bed to yourself. Igni nod. So, what's he doing on the couch? Igni just puts a little fire on her finger and puts it around her neck. Ah, that makes sense. Well, uh, as I'm sure you know, we had a we had a lot to do today, so maybe you could wake him up. And Igni just nods. Tell him to get dressed and all that stuff. All right. So. She, and she shoes out Drava. All right. And as soon as Drava walks out, all she hears is fireballs flying. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright. I ain't paying for the damages this time. Drava feels the heat from the flames being slung all over the place, and she just steps on over to Yashua's room. All Drava hears while she's walking is, Okay, okay, I'm up. <laughs> Henry goes in and takes a shower with all his charred marks. Alright. So, Drava knocks on Yashua's door. 
I respond just by saying it's open. You could come in. She too cautiously enters the room and it's like, hey, what's up? How'd you sleep after, you know, all of that? Boring. I'm just like brushing my teeth. <laughs> It's like the most futuristic toothbrush you've ever seen. Uh huh. Interesting. <sighs> um, I don't even want to know how that toothbrush of yours works out. Oh, nah, it's just plasma. Disintegrates all the plaque. Pretty handy. You put, you willingly put plasma on your teeth. It doesn't burn you. Okay, okay. I snap my fingers and I instantly just materialize the clothing. It's just on top of me. I just start wearing clothing all of a sudden. Um. How do you wash your clothes and your gear by proxy? Ah, you see, bacteria, germs, all of the nasty stuff can't survive in a vacuum. Yeah, that's, uh, so you, yeah, you made a good point with that. Also, uh, I like to throw lavender in there, too. It smells nice, and as he starts smelling his shirt. Uh -huh. I'm assuming, even with all that, you still have, like, washing machines where you all come from? Washing machines? I just tilt my head. Oh, shit. Um... Uh, we do clean our clothing, but we just throw it in a vacuum. As you guys are speaking about that, Henry comes in and says, Hey, Yashua, it's laundry day. I need the zero, the zero vacuum space. Ah, uh, here. Uh, think of a washing machine as like a shower and or bath for clothes. Henry turns around. Ancient tech. <laughs> it just gives Yasha the dirty laundry. Well, excuse me for not being in a technologically superior advanced dimension. And 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 I'm all like, ancient tech? I didn't even know washing machines existed. I, geez, I gotta pick up a history book one of these days. Henry says, oh yeah, it was in one of the history books on the Ark ship. <sighs> Anyways, I literally just, you see like a, a small little black hole and Henry, you could just toss your clothing there. You too, Drava, if you want to get your stuff clean. <laughs> she sees the mini black hole and preemptively like leaps backwards. And he uh, just tosses his clothes in like nonchalantly and Igni's like trying to pull Henry away from it. You guys just carry black holes on your person? What? What do you it's mean? It's a small what? singularity. It's harmless. What are you talking about? Okay. See, a singularity this small is not going to do any damage unless you force someone's face into it. You see, in my dimension, black holes of any size are a very bad thing. Like, like. Uh, uh, uh you, do you guys have continents where you're from? Yeah, we have countries, uh, continents. Cl close enough. Uh, yeah, a, a, a black hole of any size can just easily wipe out a continent. Well, you, you, I guess you need to learn how to control them. Observe as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and you do that. 
and she visibly goes gray in the face. And, and she, right before I notice it's gray in the face and then and then I just shrink it into the size of a quarter. Okay, I'm like, okay, playtime's over. And he just says, can you control your photon? Control my e. what? Not to you, to Yashua. Oh. Ah, fine, I just completely, like, disable it. It just shrinks into nothingness. Remind me at some point where we're not, you know, busy with dimension saving missions to uh, show you how we do things where I come from. At least when it comes to our clothing. As she says that, Henry's clothes get spit out right into his face, all clean. I just snap my fingers and it just. <laughs> It's just a ball of clothing spat at his face. It's a white hole this time that spits it out. <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. Anyways. We should get going. Yeah. We have a long day. Yeah, we need, we need to get a move on. Cause Henry's they, just putting on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> they say this is going to take an entire day. I don't want to, you know, be caught with the shortage of time and all that. All right, so. Hello, little pixie. I just, like, pat her head and just walk by her. While Henry's getting dressed, you guys notice a little sun tattoo on his back. Huh. I ain't gonna question it. <laughs> Drava, she looks at it, and internally, she assumes that that's part of... That's another thing that came with your uh, pact with Diablos. And then she keeps it moving. Yes. <laughs> I had him like thinking a sun tattoo. How bland. So we're gonna move back over to the club. <laughs> There's treasure chest over there. <laughs> All right. Henry just drags Perry's treasure chest. Turn that off. I'll <laughs> turn this. Where is it? Where is it? Alright. Not that. Okay. So. You all enter into Francesca's office. And you see... Cynthia, Francesca, Zero, and Osiris waiting for you all, looking pretty serious. Like in the office? Yeah. Like let's just say that for simplicity's sake, they they have their game faces on. I. I walk in the office. I. I notice the atmosphere, and I simply just nod my head at them. As you all enter in, Cynthia immediately hands you a plate full of food. That'll be your breakfast for now. And then, as you all receive those items, <clears throat> excuse me, Regis uh, teleports into the space with a very large bag of supplies for you all. And you also notice that Francesca appears to be wearing an outfit similar to what the Admiral of a ship would wear. Oh no. However, 
you also notice that there are small golden electrical embro embroideries shown about the suit as well. And she's also wearing a a wristwatch that has a display of everything going on in the city at the moment. So Dre was going to speak up. Well, I see that everyone is ready to go with the extremity of the atmosphere at the moment. And Zero speaks up. <clears throat> yeah. We've, uh, became aware of a few things that happened overnight that are, it's going to put an even stronger sense of urgency on the mission you're about to take place. Let's say that, um, one of the directors decided to have someone on their team publish an article that is beginning to sway public opinion for the negative. And it is most certainly not pinning you guys in a good light. Yashua just shrugs. Well, of course. Henry asks, which director? Cynthia says, oh, you know. The one that works right up under Frankie's mom. That one. Hmm. As you all were taking your rest, this happened overnight. And it's also led to some particular individuals uh, deciding to cross over into the entertainment district to take matters into their own hands. What, like bounty hunters? More like wannabe bounty hunters. They were quickly apprehended the moment they set foot in here and started causing a problem. But people are also beginning to say that they saw this and they saw that and someone we are still trying to determine who did this has been spreading a rumor about you all crossing over into the unclaimed district and trying to take the place for yourselves. Yastro folds his arms and says, it's interesting. Somehow our previous conversation got out. A bug? No, I ask. There's there's no bugs in here. It's people making conjecture based off of truthfully what's been going on since you all got here. Henry says, let's just make sure about that. He snaps his finger and uses the tech. <clears throat> yeah. It's too good of a coincidence. Let me use it. A sec. <clears throat> Open. And as you do that, Cynthia asks you, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, where's my... He's... Playing with a little spell he got from our friend Cuban. Something that we're going to need for our trip. Alright. Uh, let's do this. Though, Henry, I wasn't expecting you to try it out so soon. Henry does that, and you see a rainbow colored mist envelop the area. Pretty. And you. You notice that there is no source of bugs or traps or setups in the room. 
and the longer the mist stays around, it expands across the entire club area, inevitably covering the, covering the entire building, and you find nothing. As Francesca breaks her attention from her wristwatch, and she says that, Trust, we've already checked the place for any kind of bugs or the sort, but... Oh, I believe you. When we told you the other night that the other district leaders tend to rule things with an iron fist, they don't necessarily allow the people to think for themselves. It's unfortunately a situation of believe what you are told or suffer the consequences for rebellion. So, either the other district members that want you all dead decided to employ some of their reporters, if you will, to concoct this bullshit story about you all. Regis speaks up. <coughs> The only reason I showed up is because, one, I have a a non-blood-related relative that is in need of assistance out there. Two, to provide you with some salvos that you may or may not need. And three, if you find anything that appears to be medicinal or something worthy of inspection put hands on it and bring it back here as Regis hands each of you a moderately sized pouch that contains 10 Mega Potions, 10 Mega Ethers, and a single Phoenix down for each of you. Hey. I will put that in Roll20 chat just so you can keep track of that. Henry looks at the Phoenix down and is like, Did this come from Osiris too? Osiris speaks up, No, this did not come from me. It is possible to create artificial Phoenix downs, don't you know? Dang it, I, I thought this came from the, the fire chicken. Francesca speaks up, Henry, now is not the time for joking. And can you, at least in this one instance, respect Osiris enough not to call her that? Henry just says, nope. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this once more, because I don't think you necessarily got the hint. Can you respectfully cease this activity? Eep. <laughs> uh, what is that? <laughs> that is her charisma role. Her, well, her intimidation role specifically. I whistle. Wait, you better listen to her. Wait, wait, wait. Gotta fight it with my one crimson. <laughs> you Where's borderline save, cower in fear. <laughs> now then. <clears throat> Your mission, as per stated in the last from the last day and a half is to enter into the unclaimed territory discover any and all information about what's taking place in there discover any traces no matter how small they might be about the formations activities and the lives of people that 
may or may not inhabit the space. And then any evidence that you think may be necessary in proving your innocence, come the day of your trial, find it, document it, and make it back here before the day is over and alive. We will do what we can on our side to help construct your case of innocence because as we are more or less the ones in charge and very important figureheads of the entertainment district, we cannot accompany you. Henry, I have altered your citizenship to where you can travel to and from, but do not make it known that you are directly affiliated with me to anyone in the unclaimed land. Do you understand? Henry just nods, still scared. As for the rest of us, Zeril and Cynthia will accompany you to the exit of the Entainment District and the entrance to the Unclaimed Land. And Osiris will also be joining you all. I raise an eyebrow, really? Yes, and believe it or not, it was of her own volunteering. Hmm. Good to have you along, Osiris. She doesn't say anything verbally. She just cranes her head in your direction a bit, and then Henry goes, just... go back. Goes back to looking at the rest of the group as a whole. Henry just darts very bad vibes at her. Osiris looks at you with the same expression. And she speaks up. Do not take this as an act of kindness or a gesture of anything positive. I'm only doing this for my own benefit to see what those who live without dominion conduct themselves. A journey of self discovery. Jeva speaks up. <clears throat> uh, one quick question. Say we get into any discrepancies or have to fight anyone. What do you recommend that we do? Because since we already have a pretty massive guillotine on our heads at the moment um I don't necessarily think we should go and fight people uh, just because they provoke us because that would make us look worse than what we already do to those who aren't aware of the situation And Daryl speaks up. Well, to be blunt, if you gotta fight, you gotta fight. There's not much I can say aside from avoid any and all combat when possible. But if if someone that is unaware does engage you, do not let them know why you're actually there. Just say that you're a wandering traveler, or say you're a cartographer or something. Because we've already had one failed excursion in the city's history, and let's say that those people did not make it back at all, in any capacity. Henry looks at Yashua. And says, why don't we just say we're looking to set up a bar? And Henry, he just winks at Yasha. 
materialize like five barrels behind me and just lay back on them. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Whatever, this is Francesca talking. Whatever you can do to curry favor with whatever the local populace may be, do it. We, we Liquid have confidence makes the tongue real loose. We have enough things to try and mitigate at the moment. And I really can't be bothered with another mountain of work to do. Though, if we are wanted, and there are wannabe bounty hunters, as you mentioned, there's going to be people, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to recognize us, since you know we're going to be on trial soon, and I'm pretty sure everyone in the and all these districts know about us by now. Do you have anything that could change? Our appearance, maybe a mask, equipment of sorts. Well, I know that Henry is capable of doing illusions, but he can only do that for so long. Cynthia speaks up. Well, from what we've seen, while there are wanted notices of you all, they are what you used to look like. So, Yashua, it's your old hair and eye color. Henry, it's you before you fuse with Diablos. And Drava, um, we can make a mask for you because you don't look all that different. Yeah, her complexion certainly changed. That's it. And as for Osiris, you wear a hood all the time. So you, you don't really have to do much. Hmm. Save for Mavery doing something about that arm of yours. You know, we'll oh, wait. I completely forgot I'm wearing a scarf. I'm just going to wear a scarf like a mask. I forgot my character was wearing a scarf. <laughs> you know the rainbow scarf I have for uh, elemental resistance? Yeah. I'm just going to use that. Just It just cover, like, uh, just cover my mouth and nose, just like ninjas do. Alright. going to look weird. Should have a rainbow scarf on like that. You're gonna be doing a. Uh... Hang on, I have an image for this. Give me a sec. Can I just drag this in here? Nope. All right. Like. Yasho is just like m messing around with a scarf. Then afterwards, he gets an idea, and then he just wraps the scarf around his mouth. Something like uh. Oh my god! What is it? Something like this. You have an image for what? Uh, look in Roll20 chat. Uh, Something like that with the scarf. Yeah, something like that. He just, like, puts it over his mouth. Okay. Just cover half the face. Well, okay. it's better than nothing, he says, as he puts the scarf over. <laughs> All right. Zero speaks up. We're burning daylight here. You all understand what you got to do? Uh, yep. Though, if we do, unfortunately, engage hostiles, I'll do my best not to kill them. If anything, I'll just incapacitate them. So before you all properly set out, Francesca opens up her coat. She brings out a small remote control device and she hands half of it to Yashua. 
And she gives the other half to Osiris. Wait, what did she give us? A remote control device that is split into halves. What is... Excuse me. As you, as you begin to ask what that particular device is, Francesca gets a, a very devilish yet determined grin on her face as she very calmly says this device that I just handed you is the remote activation for our Valkyria unit I am giving you this only in the event of this is absolutely necessary and there is no other feasible way out of whatever situation you find yourselves in I give half to you Hen Yashua because you've proven to be very trustworthy along with you and your team and I've given the other half to Osiris to truly test her as a person I see. Well, I'll take good care of it. Uh, as it dematerializes. Osiris examines device, the device as it looks like nothing she's ever seen before. And she puts it inside of her cloak. Zero and Cynthia speak up at the same time. All right, you all ready to go? I nod. Henry. Henry nods. Drava. There's no, there's no shortcut, is there? No. We're, we can take you as far as the exit from here and the entrance to there. And from that point forward, you guys are on your own. No communicators, because it'd be out of range. There's no backup assistance. It's just you and your judgment. Mm. Alright. In Henry's head, he says, Are you ready to go, Diablo? Say goodbye to Garland. Diablo speaks up. <laughs> I have been waiting for this all night. You do not understand how excited I am for this. I know, well, that makes two of us. Henry's a little worried about this. I say that to Diablos. <laughs> Like, you do know this is a stealth mission to do. <laughs> oh, no. Just, I know full well that this is supposed to be a stealth mission. It's just that you know how these things tend to go. Things don't normally always go cold blood. And given that this is a new undiscovered land, who knows what kind of chaos is already going on over there? After hearing that, Yashua, you see Yashua just put his palm in his forehead. And Henry like, has his palm already on his forehead. And we're like, ah, oh, this is going to be a long day. <laughs> okay. So, you handle this or you need to. You know the truth. Don't call me. Must you meet me? Though I might be a little bit more talkative than normal today. Henry just smiles. So we're friends. Shut up. 
Anyways, as Zero said, we're burning daylight. Let's go. Okay. So, we're gonna move to this map down here. Place your tokens right here, please. Where? I didn't see the ping. Bottom. Right here. Henry tells Igni just to stay in his pocket till she's needed. Okay. What's cool is when Igni goes into the pocket, she's right next to the dragon uh, brooch. So it makes it look like the dragon's head, like the eyeball has a little shine to it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. Oh, look, there's a corner store there. Or a gas station. Wait, a gas station? Uh, Henry holds <laughs> Igni in his pocket tighter. <laughs> I don't think we can step close. Uh, Zero speaks up. Uh, I mean, logically, it would make sense not to take a fire pixie to a gas station. Um, I mean, if I just raise an eyebrow and I'm like, you guys still use fossil fuels? Uh, for some operations here and there. Not all the time, though. Hmm. Besides, we've managed to refine it down to where it doesn't, you know, tear the environment apart and all that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. We can discuss all that later. So, if you follow the cat and I... <clears throat> so, up here, this is as far as we can go with you guys. From here on out, once you cross this gate... Guys will be one hundred percent on your own. <sighs> and to I guess speed up the process, I recommend that you will kick it in the high powered flight gear because it's it's gonna take some time getting from here to there. When you do see what appears to be like a maybe a small river with some not dead but leafless trees, you'll know you began going the right way. Just go right. straight ahead. Now I activate the flight unit, and you know how fighter jets sound when they're about to take off? They make, like, a startup noise, and it gets louder and louder and louder, and then to the point where you hear a combustion sound, and then you just see them take off. Okay, so... Huh. Uh, run that... Run that by me one more time. Okay. So you see Yasha... Picking up a, a stance that to everyone here looks, except for Henry, looks very alien to them. Uh-huh. And you see, like, the amulet, right? The... Anklet. The anklet. You notice it's the anklet, but you notice it's, it's, it's a weird design. Because Yasha was tempering around with it. Uh-huh. So the design looks very alien to Zero. And instead of just being magic, just for lore wise, it is magic, but I'm just gonna say this. It's a mixture of magic and photons at the same time. Just just to give an extra kick when he flies. 
Okay. Then Sarah sees Henry's demon wings pop up. <laughs> so like, all you hear is like, you see like a small blue flame. It gets bigger, 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 and then it turns purple. And then you hear like a loud explosive sound and you just see like, and then you just see Yashua take off, but he's still there, but it's just an after image and then it just vanishes. Okay, so that's how you take off. Henry, you said you sprouted wings and took off? And started flying off. And Zeral sees that his design got changed up again. Okay. Uh, Dreva acts, ooh, activates the flight gear with her falcon anklets. And then Osiris sprouts a singular wing and takes off. And every time after each of you take off, you... Well, because of the intensity that Yashua took off, we'll say that he made a sonic boom, but the rest of you almost make one. That's the fuck, boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's say that you all fly in the direction Zero recommended you all going for. Let's say. Let's say four hours of just non-stop flight. And you eventually begin to see uh, the area that he described to you earlier. And as you all begin to slow down and come to a halt, I will move you all to the next location. Oh, you think I'm slowing down? I ain't slowing down. <laughs> I'm a crash land. Oh no. You say you crash landing? Yeah, but like, do you know when you crash land, but like you're not actually crashing, you're just landing on your feet, but you're like, just shattering the earth when you land? Yeah. Well, there goes our whole stealth mission. <laughs> they gonna land on this ice, so hopefully I get to sink in there just for the shits and giggles. Uh, roll acrobatics. If I fail this, I'm gonna like fall in. Ah, Kingdom Hearts 2 soundtrack. Riku, you're gonna be my DJ. <laughs> Acrobatics? Yep. Alright, now roll strength. Okay. So, let's say that you do land on the ice but you don't land hard enough to fall through but it does crack just a just a tiny bit so let's say yashua is here uh, yeah henry uh, where are you choosing to land i'm gonna land behind the rock over here this is a stealth mission so okay we'll put i'll put osiris right by this tree and I will put Drava on top of the well, on top slash inside the tree. Little bush monster. <laughs> After landing, you see me just stretching my arms, you know, trying stretching my back. Okay. Feeling a little stiff after flying for too long. Let's say that. Uh, because you all flew so long, so fast, just take off a thousand MP. Rip. Damn, one thousand MP. All right.
Alright, and as you stretch to take a look at your surroundings, Yashiwa, you do see that while the area looks lifeless and while the ground is white, there's no snow. In fact, the ground itself is quite warm with the exception of the ice. And you see small ghastly specter-like hands just idly floating about in the area. Hmm. Do we still have communication devices, like, for our party members and ourselves? It works for you all, but because of how far you are away from the source, they are beginning to act a little shoddy. Hmm. Wait, you know what? I got a better idea. I'm just gonna pull out my tombstone and just text Dravel and... Text Dravel and Henry's are like, uh, let's avoid these hostiles. <laughs> Does texting work on the tombstone? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I shoot Drava and Henry a quick text about the two, uh, uh, specters I see. And Drava responds, Are you sure they're hostile? Henry asked Diablo about the specter hands. Do you know anything about this? They don't look aggressive. In fact, the color of what they are tells me that they're pretty docile, but they can be provoked if you fuck with them. Harry's like, can I befriend them? Right question, wrong guy. I shoot another test saying, let's just avoid them. Henry shoots a text back saying, I have an idea. So Henry comes out of the, <laughs> behind the rock and slowly walks up to them. Oh no. Drava so whisper shouts I'm at you. I'm worried about that. Drava whisper shouts at you. What are you doing? <clears throat> Henry's like, do you need some assistance? To the little ghostly hand. The hand does not respond in any conceivable capacity. It still just floats there. I make my way behind the rock and I pull out the armor shredder and I start pointing at the... I don't point at it, but I point it... I'm I'm just like readying myself in case this thing does anything. Henry, or Henry does anything. Henry activates the detect spell to see if it's a trap. That will trigger. Oh, wrong button. All right. You cast your detect magic around the specter, and you can tell that it is not a trap of any way, shape, or form. Nor is it an aggressive creature. Er, spirit, my bad. Hmm. As H far as you can tell, it's just there. Does Osiris have a tombstone? No. Henry messages Drava to ask... Osiris, if she knows anything about these undead creatures. Well, we don't know if they're undead. They could just be spirits in general. Spirits are normally undead from Henry's knowledge. So that's the reason he's getting Drava to ask <laughs> Osiris. Drava poses the question to Osiris, and she responds with, They are just mere ghasts. What are you being so apprehensive for? Henry goes up and- They will neither attack or support you if they are not convinced otherwise to do so. Oh hmm. no! That big creature can control them! Henry gets back. O 
Osiris walks over to the rock on the cliff behind Yashua. <sighs> Yashua just sighs, dematerializes the weapon, and says, Okay, we're not getting anywhere here. I just ignore the, the floating wisps, whatever those are. Okay. Can I inspect the area? Uh, yes, you may. Like, over in this general area? Like, uh, you're gonna have to, that creature. You have to physically move over there, but yeah. I'm okay. gonna stay behind this rock, because I don't... Wait, no, I'm gonna stay behind this rock, because I don't like that thing. So, would I have to do insight? Uh, that would be... Investigation. Okay. Okay. So, you check the general area around you, and just the same way that Yashua observed, even though, by all accounts, it looks like this place should be freezing cold, the ground is warm, the ground, the dirt, and the ash, not necessarily ash, but the dirt and the grass are all in ashy white. The only thing cold is the ice where a river should be. You also notice this unknown creature just hanging out on top of the ice, minding his own business. Hmm. Can I create a uh, illusion? For I want to see if that creature is aggro to anything that comes near it. Okay. Give me uh, what's a medium-sized animal that you have there? Like cat, dog. Bear, uh, to medium size. I believe I have a bear in here somewhere. Let me look. Can I roll for investigation just to get a better look at the animal or creature? Okay, I will uh, do that in a moment. I am looking for my bears. I know I have a bear in here somewhere. Wall for something medium size. Uh, Do you have a rabbit? Uh, I don't have a rabbit. Uh, I found my bears though. Okay. I'll put the bear right here. So I'm going to view it with. Hmm. Aren't we supposed to avoid combat? Like, why are you gonna attack it? No, no, I'm not going to attack it. I'm going to do something so we can get past if it does attack. Where is my smoke? Uh, Dark smoke. Okay. Since... Roll the 19 for investigation. And... Taking... I'm going to instruct it to... Lead the path for us just in case anything comes to attack the bear Riku do I learn anything from that role uh, with your investigation role you become privy to the fact that this creature over here looks to be some form of reptile or amphibian and mm. you ponder how it's just hanging out on some ice <clears throat> but it physically looks to be aggressive but as for whether it is or not you cannot come to a conclusion yeah, because I was going to, you know, describe by the image what I could tell what it is. Like, uh, looking at its eyes are front forward. It's a predator. It has claws. So, it prefers to claw its enemy. It's uh, bipedal, so it, uh, so it must have uh, good leg strength. 
it's reverse jointed, so it must be fast. Judging by stature, it might be what seven feet tall. Mm, let's say six and a half. Hmm. And I'm just r relaying all this in a text and just sending it to Drava. Okay. Drava receives this text and proceeds towards your general direction after telling Osiris to come with her. So let's say that Drava will be over here and Osiris will be on this side. And Osiris quietly remarks, do you always conduct your stealth missions this I'm not going to use timid, but cautiously. Henry looks at her and says, if you want to be non-cautious, you could go walk up to the giant lizard. She raises a single eyebrow and looks at you with a very quizzical look on her face. You can tell that for a moment she actually contemplated doing it. <laughs> okay, anyways, since this is a stealth operation and we're trying to get to. Ah, what was that place called again, Riku? The Central What? Central Unclaimed District? Central Unclaimed District. We want to get there without getting any attention from anyone or anything. So we have to head this way, I'm guessing, right? Yep. And then this thing's here. Uh, can I have the bear start walking, like, the path? Yeah. Idea. Before you start sending up your bear out, why don't we make our way behind this rock? And, make, and have your bear get its attention here? So I rush its... If... It tries to rush the bear. It could be away from us. Okay. I'll send the bear over here. And I'll, over the frozen river. Alright. Gonna make, yeah, gonna we'll make my way over here. This way. As you, as you want to make your way in that direction, please roll stealth for me. Oh, no. As I will oh, roll God. for Osiris and Drava. Stealth. So my <laughs> tattoos can only be non-class spells, right? Right. Or only class spells, you meant. They cannot be class specific abilities. Okay. So it's basically like slow and all that stuff yeah. I have. Slow. You know what I was hoping for, Riku? Stop. Ira. If I uh, rolled a nat 20 for stealth, I was just gonna like, you know, slither like a snake. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Where'd you say you were sending the bear again? Close by. Back like, here. Yeah, right there. Right where he pinged. Right here. Alright. Get it into its uh, point of view. Or, well, since it's looking down this way, into its peripheral vision. You send the bear in that direction. And the creature notices the bear. And it casually saunters on over. He gets up, saunters over, and sits down right next to it. And it looks like it's attempting to talk with said bear, but in a very nonchalant, laissez-faire type manner. Do we notice that it's talking to the bear or not? Nah? If you look behind you, yes. 
gonna take a look back and then ah so it's intelligent I muttered to myself but like I say it like loud enough for everyone to hear me here as Cyrus speaks up what gave you the notion that it wasn't intelligent Nothing did. I don't know how the life forms are in this world. Just because you can walk on two legs doesn't mean you're able to speak. Yeah, you would think that about most creatures. Ignore that ping, Rick. Mm hmm. Ignore that ping. I'm just grabbing a text. Are we done charading around this, what should be a winter cold-esque area? Yeah, let's get a move on, quietly. As you make your way over, you hear, ah, uh, excuse me, um, before you all decide to leave and whatnot, um, you just gonna leave this here? I hesitantly crank my head back. <laughs> Did... uh, I just tap Henry's shoulder and I'm like, your problem. <laughs> and as you do that, out the corner of your eye, you see that one of the gassed hands is right behind you. But it is, it, is oh. not, it is not appearing to be hostile or aggressive. Mm. Ah. Can I use critical Libra to see it? I see, see something. See the hand? Yeah, I want to see if it has health and all that. Uh. Yeah, sure. Let me just... um draw some smoke where the bear is since I did see you activate that like it's my drawing tool circle okay so I didn't do anything to the bear it just no like I say it just like Walked on over it and sat down next to it and tried talking to it. Uh, that's pretty critical leap, right? I'm talking to it. <laughs> Henry wants to go make friends with the lizard. I will shoot you in the leg. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm doing no. it. I'm, I'm doing shooting it. you in the leg. <laughs> if you move, I will shoot you in the leg. And, and, and I'm going to have to roll stealth for a suppressive shot to do that. Non-combatant status, a summoned creature. Wait, I could summon spectral hand? <laughs> no. Anyway, as you two argue amongst yourselves, you hear another voice. Um, uh, so, yeah, this bear, uh, it poofed. I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, well, it's gone now. So, um, can I ask you why you're all just sneaking around here? Uh -oh. And and as as the creature asks that, it and the other hand approaches you all. Oh no. Um, I but... just sigh. Ah. <sighs> Henry walks up. I literally just shove Henry at the direction of this creature, and I'm like, do your thing. <laughs> well, we're trying to make it to the city. The city? What for exactly? We're interested in setting up a bar in town. I materialized like three barrels beside me. A bar? Um. I mean, we. 
we have plenty of those. I don't necessarily see much of a market net gain that you all could make, but uh, if you want, uh, go ahead. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop you. I just hang out here. Are these your friends? Henry points to the little specter hands. No, they are how I talk. Uh, so when I walked up, you already knew. Uh, well, I knew about your friend over there because he landed on the ice. And because I was also sitting on said ice, I felt the vibrations from over there to where I was. My eyes light up. Interesting. Henry asks, do you have a name? My name is Charles. I may not look like one, but I am a frog. Henry's eyes light up. I'm Henry. Nice to meet you. And he puts out his hand. I would shake your hand, but my hands are covered in poison and barbs and very slimy. Oh, that's cool. I walk beside Henry over here and then ask Charles. Okay, Charles, could you tell me about this place? Like where and we are here right now? No, 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 not just that. But could you tell me about this place and maybe if you know any shortcuts to the city? Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm what you call like a, like a hermit. Uh, it's just me and my old man here. We just hang out. We don't really do much. Uh, your old man. Don't Is he as kind as you? Uh, that's debatable, oh, depending no. on the day, really. Um, we don't really go to the city very often, like, tw like once every two months, I, I guess. Uh, as for the city itself, I mean, like, there's people there. Some of them are pretty uh, aggressive with each other. Um, depending on where you go, there's, like, some chaos, or there's law and order. Some people have, like, tribes and all that stuff. It's a very territorial place, but since there's no, like, set leader of the place... It's like a, it's like free for all, pretty much. Mm. And Henry last asked. Time I went there, uh, my vocal cords got ripped out of me. So, yeah. Ow. Yeah, the only way and I can I talk is with those pans behind you. I'm gonna roll, if I may. Like investigation to see his throat quickly. Yeah, you're gonna have to ask him to do that first. Oh. Okay. Can our cure spell heal that? No. So there's no way. We're gonna need like Chiraga or something to fix that. Not even. Like like his his, his vocal cords were physically ripped out of him. He did, and that that's been a very long standing injury, so no matter what you do, uh those ain't coming back. Ah, uh, well, that's unfortunate. Hmm. So the city is, uh... Henry just glances over at his tires. <laughs> City's, uh... What you call a... No man's land. Osiris Bisa, why are you casting your gaze upon me? I was just thinking about the great Phoenix ability. I may be able to restore life, 
but I cannot restore small individual pieces such as that. Nor do I want to. I want to. If I lose an arm, you're not healing it? No. <laughs> Henry just asked Diablo, is there any way? Eyes light up. It's just that he's going to have to give something up. Oh, I see an eye for an eye. Henry's like yeah. philosopher stone much. <laughs> I'm going to disregard that comment. Philosopher Stone. I <laughs> Yasho laughs at that. Henry's like, does the person have to give it up? I think you have to give something up to use that said spell. It depends. Can I take a hostage and use them as the sacrifice? No. Oh. How badly I does this Charles want to verbally speak again? Henry spews out. How badly would you want to speak again? What kind of question is that? I just asked. I just asked Diablos. Hey, why don't you take Henry's vocal cords and you could shut him up forever? Harry just looks at Yasha. That's not happening. You forget that. Bad. Yeah, but you'll be saving me a lot of trouble. Yeah, <laughs> you, not me. Plus, he can't use my mouth when he's in my body. Oh, he doesn't need to. He's a telepath. Both of you have been a fair point. Hey. What? This is not about me. <laughs> Well, the option's there. It's up to you. <laughs> Driva speaks up. Um, so just how long have you been out here? Uh. Uh. Shit, like. 20 something years? 20 years? You see me like walking around him, trying to like, trying to get a good understanding how he physically is built and all that. Twenty years, huh? Yeah, I'm actually uh, pretty old in frog years. Henry asks, "So you were born a frog race?" Yeah, I'm a frog. I, I just told you that. You start off as like a tadpole? No. Uh, we start out just like this, but smaller. Cool. What's a tadpole? Uh, it's like a fish. If that's the case, then I have eaten very many tadpoles in my life. <laughs> the fact <laughs> cannibalism echoes in our heads. <laughs> so the question is, how badly do you want your speech back? Uh, to be honest, I don't really care. I've gotten so accustomed to not verbally speaking that it's it's whatever 
Besides, how are you even gonna give me my ability to talk back? Verbally, anyway. Don't worry about that. If you're content with your life, I won't push on with the questions. Okay. Weirdo. I have one question. How do you summon these spectral hands? As Henry Keys is at the log. Like. Who's at the, the spectral hands? Uh, don't tell him, please. Uh, That's what my eyes say. He looks at Yashua. He looks at Henry. Man, I don't know. They just show up. I don't think about that shit anymore. Is it magic? Uh, Henry's so interested in the dynamic of these hands. Charles looks at the hands. Uh, I guess. Why do you want to know so bad? I would love to try to summon one of them. You can make, like, other cooler things in hands, though. <sighs> Can't you? I mean, you made that bear over there. But those are spectral hands. Yeah, you can make the same thing with your illusions. Okay. Can we, uh... Like, get a move on? It was real nice to meet you. Uh, Riku, what was his name again? Charles. Charles? Charles? You know the way to the city, right? Uh, leave this place... Go straight ahead for like two hours, and then you'll see like a like a grassy plain or something, a bunch of rocks, and then go another three hours from there, and you'll be close. You should see like a giant wall or something. A long march. We're gonna have to start gliding there. Save some time. Y'all can fly. Henry shows the demon wings, like out his back. Are you human or some? Variant of a land walker? Uh, my first one. He was originally human, yeah. Uh, okay, um... Uh, be on your way, I guess. I'm gonna go back to my ice. Uh, try not to find yourself in any of the bad spots or something. Yeah, you take care of yourself. And as you say that, he saunters back over to... Actually, before... Was. Uh, I, I was just gonna give him, like, a, two barrels of alcohol. Since he likes just moping around over here. Here, for your troubles. Just uh, place, like, uh, two barrels... Uh, thanks, I guess. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll find something for it. Yeah, just drink it. I'll consider that. Drink it, sell it, use it as an explosive, what have you. <laughs> so he takes the barrels. He goes back to his spot, and he plops right back down where he was originally sitting at, looking to be at absolute peace with himself. Damn, that guy, that, that frog has found tranquility. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that we have stumbled upon Gandhi the frog. Gandhi the frog. <laughs> Uh, 
I like that description. Make a shirt that says Gandhi the Frog and have this guy as an image. <laughs> Well, let's go. Okay. So you all take flight once again. And as you are mid-transit, Osiris poses the question. So, in the event that things don't necessarily go according to whatever plan you all come up with. When we make it to this city, say, we need to evacuate and backtrack. How are you all going to handle that? We come back here to Charles. What makes you think they won't follow you if you are followed? Oh, for me, I, I could get away. I have enough smoke for that. But for you guys... Yashua uh, just smirks. They won't. <laughs> I trust in all of our abilities. Especially you, Osiris. <laughs> Henry just pats her head. <laughs> Let your hand get close to me one more time and I will remove it. Hmm. You're quite shy, aren't you? I don't say this in character, it's just a thought. Okay. Just give me one second. The uh, player marker is refusing to move. Mm. Okay. I got it. Alright. So, make it to the Grass Plains land that Charles mentioned that you will inevitably see. And upon landing, you see what appears to be a magic ring, so to say, just sitting atop <clears throat> a pretty sizable rock, so to say. Is the map loaded, or you're loading it now? No, I'm describing what you're gonna see when I move okay. it all over. So you see, you see a magic ring that appears to be fire, and you see a giant off in the distance, and you see a harpy sitting on the ground next to said magic ring. Hmm. We come by from here? Yep. Okay. Magic ring. Here I come. Nah. You know, this time instead of just being all stealthy, I'm just gonna, like, walk by and just... See? Like, take a glance and just ignore it. Okay. Henry walks up. What, it, do what, we know what gender the harpy is? It appears to be a woman. Henry mm. calls out to the female harpy. Hey, can you come over here, miss? She looks at you, but... <coughs> but... <coughs> does not respond. He said there were <laughs> different tribes. Okay, Henry... Walks... She doesn't respond, dang. I'm gonna take a closer look at the ring. Oh no, you're in her territory. Remember they said tribes? Yeah, I know. I'm just an outsider. Uh, Nothing wrong with a little curiosity. Please I'm sorry, I think roll a D50. Oh, a no. D50? I mean, a 1D50. Whoops, my bad. 1... Wait, how do I do this again? Slash R, 1D, 50. 23. Okay. 
uh, when you approach this ring, you take uh, minor damage. You take a uh, you lose 20 MP. You lose, you lose 20 HP. As this is a uh, pretty disgustingly hot. I I comment after getting like a small burn. I'm like, ah, kind of spicy, ain't it? Henry walks up behind Yashua and inspects the fire with his hand very slowly to see how hot it really is. Careful, you could burn yourself. I just want to test if my Igni armor works with it. No. Oh. Because of your gear, while you do not absorb, um anything from the fire it doesn't phase you in a matter of ow that hurts it's a it says partial uncomfortable heat and i walk up a little bit closer into it uh if you do that you run the risk of acquiring the burn status is there something on top of the rock if you re-engage the falcon anklet and then perform an investigation roll, an investigation roll and a wisdom roll, we will see what the outcome is. Okay, I'll do that. Investigation roll and a wisdom roll, right? Yep. All right, so let's see, take fight just up a bit, and you can see what appears to be a creature inside of this ring. You can just barely make out its form, but you can't exactly tell what it is. Uh... I asked Henry that he's like floating what like how high is he floating up there? Let's say thirty feet. Thirty feet. Henry just shouts down, there's something inside there. I'm on like, cool. It's not our problem. Henry flies over to the harpy. And asks her what's going on. She again looks at you, but while she still does not verbally respond, she just flaps her arm towards the ring of fire. Henry asks her, Do you need help? She shakes her head, no. No. Is that thing causing you any trouble? She gives an expression that neither reads yes or no. Almost like a... Like an in-between kind of thing. Are you causing the fire? She does not respond okay Henry's going to go inside oh my god <laughs> hey if she doesn't need the help maybe the thing inside needs the help I just sigh listen we're not supposed to be getting involved with these people Why do you got to make things complicated? Because. It wouldn't be fun if it wasn't. Now all I hear is Diablo slapping inside me. <laughs> uh, as you do that, we're going to pan over to Drava and Osiris for a moment. Yeah, and... No. Osiris is going to take notice of the fact that Henry has 
decided to enter this ring of fire and she is going to casually mention to Drava why is it that you decide to put up with his antics and Drava reluctantly answers his antics, whether I want to reject it or not, do have a habit of getting results when results are necessary. Can I hear this? No. Um, why did you volunteer to come along with us? It is as I said, I'm not doing this out of kindness or any act of positivity. I just want to see how those without dominion conduct themselves. And based off of what that creature back that char- Hang on. Uh, I'll be right back. That's fine. What do you think's inside? Demon? I don't know. It's a ring of fire. I hope it's another demon. I need to add him to the army. <laughs> Something's up with that harpy, though. Yeah. Just be ready with the ogre. Because I think the ogre is going to come running. I think I might just talk to the ogre. I have to go ask the people downstairs to be quiet. Just they want to sit in the living room and be all loud and shit. I walk up to the old girl, whoever and this guy is. As I was saying for Osiris, uh, I wish to see how those without dominion conduct themselves. That is all. As for the annoying one, he just entered into a a magical confinement cell, unbeknownst oh, no. to him. But he'll find out when he tries to leave. Oh no. And before we continue on with that, uh, Henry, you... Oh, fuck. Joshua, you said you were approaching the ogre? This is. A ogre? A big man? <laughs> as far as you can tell, it's a pretty large guy. I just casually just walk up to him. You know. No bad intentions. None good either. Or just with a genuine question. And like, hey, big guy, what's with, what's with the fire show back there uh well you see that the harpy lady over there mm -hmm. she um likes to let's say that she has a very sick and twisted way of acquiring her food Right. Yeah, there's something in that thing. I don't know what. But uh, her and her tribe like to slowly starve their prey to death. Oh, I thought. I save whatever is inside here. I thought that she just wanted to make a pot roast or something. Granted, the ring of fire and the extreme temperatures. Yeah, uh, you know, 
my tribe and I, we stay on this side. We tend to settle things in a very peaceful manner. But her and hers, they're, uh, they're there's, there's a couple of screws missing, if you get what I'm saying. The missing name. I look back at the at the Ring of Fire, and I'm like, yeah. Um, say, what's the name of these tribes? I'm new here. Yeah, I can, I can very much tell. Uh, um, he looks around just to ensure that there are no prying eyes or ears in the place. He, he kneels down just a bit to whisper in your ear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, they, they, they call themselves the Ryans. Spelled R H A Y N S. Ryans. Yeah. They're uh, uh, a tribe of many different species of harpies, but they're all collectively fucked in the head. Right. Uh, they're not hostile until provoked, are they? They are hostile at the flip of a switch, or uh, the 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 turning of a rock. Ah, uh, great. And I look back. Yeah. Uh, in that case, for your own good, I you might want to. Uh, not be near this area because my friend just walked into a ring of fire he did what he's an adult i'm not gonna stop him i don't think fire could hurt him anyways you probably should have stopped him uh you'll be surprised how how tenacious he is I'll move this real quick. Uh, you see, the reason I say that is because, uh, you know, when I say they're tribalistic, they're very tribalistic. And the one thing that will set them off without fail is when their prey is tampered with. So I reckon old Psycho over there has about 30 seconds before she starts screaming for her sisters to show up. And, uh, uh good luck getting your friend out of there. Cause those, no, he's staying. Cause those I'm just gonna make my uh, way. Those are very hard to get out of. Yeah, well, uh,. Thanks for the information. Um, what's your name? My name? Oh, uh, huh. my name hasn't been asked for by one that isn't my own in a long time. Uh, my name is Emmett. Emmett? Yeah. A. M. E. T. Okay, Amit, pleasure to meet you. My name's Yashua. Uh, one last thing, what's the name of your tribe? My tribe? Uh, we... Okay, so there's... Uh, different... Smaller pockets... Of my tribe... But the one that I hail to, we are the Vagabonds. Vagabonds. Okay. Yeah, we do our best to stay on our side of the plains, and they tend to invade our side a lot of the time. But... 
about six out of ten times we can talk them down peacefully at the cost mm. of one of our own. Well, I thank you for the information. Right. Now, before you all make your way out of here, what exactly are you doing here? It's not very often that people who don't hail from here just saunter on through. Raise my finger and I just put it against my lip and I'm like, that is a secret. But for your trouble, I gave him, well, since he's a big guy, I assume he likes to drink a lot. How strong is your drinking game, friend? Uh, my tribe, we don't drink. Ah, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, drinking is actually a severely unholy act in my tribe. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Give him a barrel of juice. Well, do you prefer juice instead? Uh, as long as it's plant and fruit based, I will take whatever you have. I materialize five barrels of juice. Here you go, friend, for your troubles. I'm not going to bother questioning how you did that. Instead, I will just take the juice and I will leave. Take care now. Right. He stacks the barrels on top of each other and then he places all five stacks on top of his head and casually walks off. Top of his head? Yep. Yep. I raise an eyebrow. Interesting. What a nice fellow. Well, ladies, should we get Henry out of trouble or should we just watch what happens? Sorry, so I say we watch what the fool does. As those harpies don't appear to be incapable of conversation. They just appear to refuse to respond. Well, I explain. Wait, were they there for that conversation? Because I wasn't paying attention if they moved up or not. Uh, Osiris heard a decent chunk of it. Drava only caught the end pieces of it. Yeah, so I just relay what he told me about the Ryans and the Harpies and how lo how a bit loony they are. So, this is Osiris talking, so they just freely embrace their primal urges. Yashua just shrugs. I don't know if this is their primal urges. These sort of creatures don't exist where I'm from. Well, it appears to me that they act entirely unrestrained, due in part that they have no leader. As what I see, because most harpies fall under command of a chieftain. And chieftains normally brand all of their followers, of which I don't see any markings upon that creature. Has that any ideas? That's a uh, interesting social structure. I raise an eyebrow while commenting on that. Regardless. He got himself in the situation. He can get himself out. And then Drava speaks up. Now, wait. 
a moment. Yeah, he did get himself caught up in that. Maybe, just maybe, we can try to help him out. And as Joshua yeah, sure, just shrugs. Well, we're not going to learn anything just by watching. Make my way over there. So as you move over to the location with Osiris and Jiva behind you, now we will pan back to Henry. Well, I have an idea, but I don't think you'll allow it, Riku. Depends on what the idea is. I want to brand one of the harpies. No. Oh, come on. <laughs> I want a harpy. I think you have enough right now. Oh, come on, please. I have a perfect picture for it, too. I have to make my repel team here. <laughs> nah, you, you, you've got enough right now. Oh, You'd be oh. aight. You'd be aight. <sighs> so now, now that you are inside of the Ring of Fire, you can see very clearly what is inside this Ring of Fire, and it happens to be a dragon. Uh oh. Dragon friend. This dragon appears to be sleeping, and with how close you are, upon further inspection, it appears to be extremely malnourished and weak looking. Hmm. Uh, Henry rushes over to its mouth and forms a blizzard crystal. And with the, such extreme heat, it turns into water. I give it to the dragon. Uh, do a... Do a survival roll for me, please. Oh, if he bites you, I'm gonna laugh. Or tries to eat you since he's malnourished. Survival. Where's survival? Hey, how about we break it Into out and make it eat the harpy? Skills oh. thing. Okay. So can't let the PS5 turn off. Let's say that with the formation of your blizzard crystal, uh in in your haste, uh you don't make it as big as you thought you did. So you only made let's say about a handful and a half worth of water. But you still get it inside the jacket's mouth nonetheless. And then it begins to cough. <coughs> Who? What are you doing to me? Henry just smiles at him or it and says, I'm here to help you. And how is it that you deign to help me now that you are trapped in this ring with me? Henry just says, watch. Watch what? And Henry just tells Diablo, let's blow this ring. Oh. Um, about that. Oh, no. <laughs> this thing is pretty dense. As in, whoever made this knows what they're doing. This is some half-ass one of the imprisoned spell. This is a pretty dense, tight, well put together cage. Hold on, how close am I to? Henry just says, I can't hear you. Diablo. Hey, so the big bad Diablo can't break a little barrier? I understand what you're trying to do, and it's not that I can't, I refuse. You got yourself involved in this, you failed us. 
solution. fun. Let's see what happens here. Like that, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, let's say, at per Diablo's recommendation of either making this better or worse for yourself, you begin to pour your own mana into the ring, and it takes a while for something to happen but your skin begins to heat up and excuse me start to glow red while at the same time the ring grows taller but it starts to become just a wee bit transparent like you you are beginning to be able to see through this ring but as a result the more mana you pour in you will begin to take damage can we see what henry's doing from the other side now that the ring is becoming more clear to see or no only he Not can see through it yet Henry can just barely see through it, but on the outside, you can't see inside of it. Uh, as for the drag, <clears throat> whatever it is you are doing, young creature, your efforts are going to be in vain. As I've tried for many, many a time, many, many, many moons to escape this wretched prison to no avail. Harry just looks at the dragon. Well, I'm not leaving you to die. You... don't even know who or what I am. Henry just says that that doesn't matter. I stand beside the harpy and look at the ring of fire, then ask, So, what you cooking? She looks at you... And she moves her arms in a large arc-like manner to show, or rather to indicate, that whatever she has inside of that is very large. And Osiris walks over and she says, enough of this. Creature, what do you have inside of that prison? And the harpy, for a small moment, has a flash of irritation on her face before she does the same motion again. And oh, large creature. So what? What you have a what? Uh, a big, a uh, big lizard in there or something? At the mention of that, 
the harpy flinches for a moment, steps to the side just a bit, and her face contorts into that of, we're not going to say utter rage, but she's pretty angry as she now has the thought of, you have come here to take her food. But on the outside, you can just see that she's getting angry. I notice this, and then I tell her, don't misunderstand. I'm just curious. I'm not going to take your prey. I've already eaten. Please roll persuasion. Persuasion. Alright. So, she believes you, for now, but she still looks very, very angry with you. And we will now pan back to Henry, and... I will ask you again to please roll a 1d100. I like how it's going up by half each time. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, you pour just a bit more mana into the wall to try and dispel it. And at this point, your hands are just about searing, glowing red. You are feeling very, very high levels of uncomfortable pain. And as a result, I will ask you to knock off 200 HP. Sizzling. And... But because of all of that, the ring is, once again, growing more and more transparent, as you can now, Henry can now see clearly through the ring from the inside. But on the outside, Yashua, Osiris, and Dreva can now begin to see Henry and the other creature inside of the ring. As when the harpy takes notice of this, she gets so angry that her green skin adopts a reddish glow to it. You know what? Do you know what just came to mind? No. Like, just now, what... Freaking, I just imagine that right before she does anything, I just low key suppress her shot to the fucking head. <laughs> I was thinking if killing will 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 we'll killing her dispel it, but like I don't want to kill anyone without without a proper reason. But we're not allowed to kill people. But since she's getting angrier. I'm thinking to maybe incapacitate her, maybe shoot some ice shots at this thing, or just freeze her instead. I don't know. Some scenarios are playing in the back of my head right now. Hmm. Ah. So I say this in character. Ah, so it was a large lizard. Or I think that's a lizard. While that's going on outside, I'm just saying to the dragon, can you last a little longer? I don't have the strength to keep my eyes open. Whatever you are doing, please hasten the process. And as he says that you can you can tell that he is on his last very last threads of life. 
as this thing mm. is dangerously close to dying of starvation. I walk back to these two, and then, and then I ask, okay, so I was right, it is a large lizard, but, uh, what is that? Draven and Osiris accidentally say at the same time, it's a dragon. A dragon? Fascinating. What is a dragon? Um. Uh. Osiris, do you want to explain this? Ugh. I'd rather not, but. Or you could just simply tell me it's a large lizard with wings that breathes fire. Cool, let's get a move on. I don't think these two are going to survive much longer. Well, Is there anything we could do to break this circle? I'm like low-key, speaking in a low tone so she doesn't hear me. <sighs> this is Osiris talking. Given the... constructive nature of this spell, it can be broken from the outside, or you can choose to erect an opposing barrier to try and cancel it out. Hmm. But as for the annoying one, he appears to be doing this the hard way. Which is using his own mana source to counteract the circuit within the barrier itself. Oh. It must have been Diablo's idea then. He's trying to get a kick out of things, like usual. I would not be surprised if that was the case. So another barrier could just cancel it out? If used correctly, yes. Can I just use a shining word on it then? So, if you're going to do that, you would have to place it around the barrier itself, and then reduce it in size, almost if you're trying to compact it into a smaller cube. However, you do run the risk of harming both Henry and the dragon inside if you do that. The other option Build a harpy. is that you can attempt, because again, your vision is being messed with because of the half-ass transparency from your side, you can attempt to cast Shining Ward on either Henry or the dragon and then expand your shining ward to break the other barrier. Put it on the dragon. Put it on the dragon. That sounds like a good idea. Protect the dragon. Ah, <sighs> well, Diablos and Henry are most likely going to get that dragon killed if they continue to do this. I'm going to cast shining ward on the dragon. Okay. Uh, before I cast that, I'm on, like, you two. Drava, Osiris. Uh, the Harpy may become a little hostile. That's, uh, understatement. If she does anything, don't kill her, but incapacitate her. Drava says, okay. And if she says... squeaks, just knock her out. Drava agrees, and Osiris says, I care not for this creature. Yeah, neither do I, but it'll make our mission easier. If I do recall correctly, while well, we were advised not to kill anything, if it comes to it, 
I will take life. Osiris, I'm pretty sure a harpy won't endanger you, but any form or factor. I'm sure you can handle putting something like that to sleep. Have... While you guys are talking, I'm going to ask Igni to try to absorb some of the heat from inside. Now I low-key cast Shining Word on the dragon. Without Henry even knowing anything. Oh, I, I can't hear anything outside of the bubble. Okay. So, if you want to go about expanding your Shining Word, that is going to be... I need three intelligence rolls from you. Okay. And you are going... I'm going to have to ask you to enter a state of concentration. Because your primary focus is... Is going to be expanding it and using Shining Ward in a completely unorthodox manner. Okay. Simply because... As you do that, because of how Shining Ward works how large tall and bright it is the harpy notices this and she begins to screech at the top of her lungs this is not dealing damage to you but because she is doing this she is calling her sisters to this side of the plains and because of that, we are now engaged in combat. Okay, so I'm going to be right here against a circle in a state of concentration. Bam, and bam. I tell... Well, I can't really say anything. I mean, uh, you can say things, but you cannot take any other physical action at the moment. You see my character, like, uh, you know how, like, uh, samurai just go on their knees, right? And just concentrate or meditate? Yeah. That's what he's doing right now. Okay. So. My back is exposed to heart, to very hungry harpies so not a favorable position right we'll say that Driva and Osiris take notice of the growing harpy swarm headed your way and you said three intelligent rolls right yeah Driva says to you so we've got company we are going to deal with this while you deal with that as for your intelligence rolls Yashua as you begin to deep dive into your concentration you zero in your thoughts Towards expansion of your ward. Uh, I will have you do that two more times, but not right now. Uh, Henry, what is it that. Are you still continuing to pour mana into the shield? Well, I mean, tear the shield apart with my mana. I said it one more time. I want to tear the mana sh prison apart okay uh do one more d100 and then roll wisdom and as you do that the heartbeats slowly encroach upon everyone's position as Drava and Osiris do indeed have their weapons drawn. Okay, so 
you take another 200 points of damage but you have poured enough mana into the cage to where you can muster the magical strength to tear a hole right through it uh, however the dragon inside is too weak to move of its own accord Oh, the bear, the president's gone. Uh, yeah. Let me just remove that real quick. I did the right thing. Okay, I did. Oh, Henry's just screams out and rips the the present open, and then he just says, Di "Diablo, it's your turn, buddy." And this. <laughs> you ugly bitches get a warm day to fuck with me. <laughs> Am I still my deep dive since the barrier's gone? Uh, yes, but your actions are not null and void. If you wish, you can continue to expand the Shining Word. Or, you can have it condense upon the dragon to improve its defensive benefits. Well, that's on my next turn, right? Yep. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Does Diablos' magic affect Igni at all? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Alright, so because you have activated Inner Demons and Diablos is currently uh, on the forefront, uh, do you. Are you going to have him uh, cast normally or were you going to have him use Khaled Vogue or his book? I want him to use his book. I want Chaos. <laughs> okay. So, after he finishes having a, a good laugh in excitement, he raises his hand aloft, and that good old book of his spawns right in his hand as he holds it out in front of him, a magic circle begins to spawn under your feet. And you can see runes appear and start to dance across the air around you. And I will put... <gasps> ah, excuse me. I will put this under you. No, that's on top. Put that right there. Yeah, that doesn't work. You know what I'm trying to do. Let me see if I move it. Let me just put it. Now it's all on top. Yeah, let me just put it right there. So, the harpies, they begin slinging out uh, arrow four spells at you one at a time. Just try and do everything in their power to both harm you and move you out of the way. So Erosia is arrow four or wind four. That's all Henry says to Diablo says get them away from the dragon. <laughs> oh, don't you worry about that. They're gonna be away from the right. Whether or not they live is another question. Okay, so that three sixty two is the attack damage roll 
of all the harpies casting wind four at you all and because there are seven of them no yeah seven of them Uh, that is coming out to a total of 2,534, however, Henry and, Henry, Joshua, and Drava are covered by this due to them being inside of the ward. Osiris, on the other hand, isn't. Hi, Osiris. <laughs> So she's getting hit for 2034 damage. And I'll display her HP because I forgot to do that earlier. As Osiris gets pelted by the wind spells, she stands her ground and actually doesn't wind up moving even though wind spells by nature forcibly move the person as she she dusts herself off just a bit and scoffs in the face of them and she says for for primal twisted harpy creatures you all can't inflict any pain worth a damn can you as she conjures up a weapon that appears to be a sword and she plants it in the ground and casts false holy 40 foot circle Hi, everything's getting hit by that. Neat. Including us. <laughs> us, whatever Diablo's doing. It's gonna be interesting. You see the description where it says any affected enemies? Ah. Uh -huh. Not allies, enemies. We're not that taking in for once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me. Put an icon up for the. He considers oh. us an ally. I didn't say that now. Well, you told me to read the description. He doesn't consider us enemies. It's <laughs> good enough for me. A moment. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me type out the description for the total darkness ailment. Is false holy a class skill? No, it's you know how in a lot of games, like special guest NPC characters only have moves that only they can use. It's a move you can't learn, basically. Well, I'm concentrating on the shiny word anyways. It's not like I could fucking learn it. It's like uh, Afrida's attacks. Okay. So, Osiris did that. And let's say that Drava will cast Let's say she uses her actions to use air crash on five of the seven enemies. Damn. Was the first one a crit? Yes, it was. 
A crit level 3 air crash. Okay, so let me add that up real quick. And because Yashua is in concentration, Henry, uh, the, the next person acting in battle will be you and Diablos. Wait, I don't get a turn? I thought you said my next turn I was going to... I mean, change my shining word. You are, but uh, because of meditation, you'll be going after uh, Henry. You, you still uh, get a turn. Don't worry. I'm not. I'm not cutting you out. Oh, that's not the right number for that. I was gonna shed a tear. Ah, uh, come on now. I'm not. Ooh, can I? I'm just gonna type this in chat. There we go. I'm not trusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I try to avoid. That, one. that was funny. I try to avoid avoid throwing shade in the recordings. That was fucking funny. Okay, so that comes out that, and twenty percent damage. Okay, so Drave is going to attack one, two, three, four, and five total damage that she don't comes out to uh, 3093 and because she used them at level 3 and she is taking 618 points of damage and she is now on the opposite side of Yashua and Henry So Drava currently has 3,381 HP remaining. Now, as for Diablos and Henry, Diablos's cast is pretty much finished as he rips out the page from the book He holds it above his head and then he slams it into the ground and he maniacally laughs and says, Get fucked. And let's say I wish I could make my uh explosion tool a lot bigger than what it is. But yeah, there's a lot of uh a lot of flare level lights going off right now. As all the harpies have been knocked back a, a decent distance. Uh, Henry, what's your magic attack stat again? 60. It's what? 560. 560. Okay. Just making sure uh, I had the right number in my head. And now, what's your intelligence stat again? My intelligence is the big number or the small small number. The small big number, number is the small number is fifty five. All right. All right. That's what Diablo did with his flare spell. And. You you use the version where he's just like in control, right? It's not the attack he's boost. He's in full control. All right, got it. So he did that, dealt damage, and now Yashua, do your intelligence rolls again, please. All right. Does that damage go into my limit break? Half of that does. 
because it wasn't necessarily you that did it, it was Diablos. Okay, I'm at. So half of that would be three. 378. Oh, I'm at max. I'm gonna break now. Alright. It's set to 1000. I was at 882, so. Okay. All right, Yashua, are you condensing or expanding it? Condense it and turn the shiny ward into like temporarily turn it into like shiny physical armor for the dragon just to keep him safe. Okay. So like the armor, like imagine a dragon ironclad in armor. Yeah. But, like, this armor just looks divine as fuck. Okay. So we'll say you do that. And if you want, you can end your meditative state now. Yep. Alright. Is Henry back in control? Uh, if you want to Claire. reclaim control, you can. Yeah, Henry comes back and screams to Yashua, Give the dragon some food, fast. break out of concentration because he shouted at my ear and I tell him you don't need to shout Henry's just holding his head because it's just coming out of control uh, do I have food for the dragon uh, you have food items on you yeah that's what I'm checking I went through my items, I didn't have any food, that's why. Or else I would've given him some. While you do that... <clears throat> uh, Osiris is going to look to you all and it says, and she's going to say... I recommend... That you get that severely weakened creature out of the way. Now. Uh, I have chunks of meat. I just forcefully open the dragon's mouth and just pour all the food items I have in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, please roll. You're gonna nature. have to roll strength for that, don't I? No, no, no. Roll nature and. Animal handling. Okay. Nature and animal handling. Okay. So you get a large majority of the contents down his mouth, and you help him eat the contents because you know again on first glance you get you're telling he's very very malnourished and barely has any strength of his own i'm gonna toss some alcohol in there too <laughs> with your assistance uh, it has consumed the food and is it's very slowly regaining strength but it still cannot move of its own accord mm. How big is this dragon? Uh, you see the rock structure that you're standing atop of? Yeah. He pretty much covers that entire thing. So what, uh, the dragon is 25 feet? Okay. 25 feet tall and about, about, about this wide. Okay, uh... You know the anime Overlord? You know how that, that maid carries that fucking big ass hamster on her back as she's flying? Uh huh. I'm gonna try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Um, I need two strength rolls from you. 
I say this, I never thought I was gonna carry a dragon today. Alright. You muster quite a bit of strength. And you manage to lift said dragon. Where are you taking him? <laughs> taking him to. Uh, away from the harpies. Maybe at this side. Uh, okay. You're gonna have to engage your flight gear for that, though. Yeah, I would do that. I'll. Uh, okay. So I have little mana left. So I'm just gonna burn all of my mana. And Why just... is the card to safety over here? Where is safety? Down in, behind the rock. Because they're... See, what I'm worried about is you're bringing him into Amit's territory. <laughs> That's still Amit's territory. More defendable for you. Alright, whatever. We'll do that. I engage the anklet, but like... I'm engaging it at full throttle because I'm trying to lift a... I don't know how many metric tons this guy weights. Uh... We'll say 30. Uh, yeah, 30 metric tons. <laughs> 30 metric tons I'm lifting. Yeah, let's go, big guy. Okay. I'm gonna put you here in the corner where it's safe. And Yasha flies by, Henry says, keep her safe. Her? I question him. Yeah, that's a dude, dragon. Okay, him. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... so that dragon lands place. here. I, I, I put him down gently. Because I just don't want to, like... Toss him. Right. I put him down gently. And then I take a defensive stance over here. And I just, you know, pat the dragon's head. I'm all like, rest easy now. Okay. So, going back to the battle area. Osiris is going to ask Henry and Drava. Do both of you know wind movement spells, yes? Yeah. Bring them closer. As when she says that, you begin to see her trademark dark smoke begin leaking out of her body. Gotta Google something quickly. Okay. Uh, what am I looking for? Right, this. So, Drava, unsure of what's about to take place, she agrees to the plan, and she uses her turn to bring five of the seven harpies closer to her. Riku. What's up? Riku. Yeah. Riku. <laughs> yeah. And? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Listen, I'm gonna be real. I didn't think that far ahead when you went when the word metric ton came out of your mouth. Cause I was just gonna say, oh, he's he's pretty heavy, dragon. Dude, when you said, oh yeah, thirty, I'm like thirty metric, like my my soul almost left my body when you said that. <laughs> Harpies were dragged a little closer. Uh, Henry, you can take your turn now. Okay, I'll use or uh, the pull of the other ones closer. All right. Where's my Aurora spell? The other tube closer, yeah. 
And then I'll cast Bubble on me and Drava with my other two. Okay. And heal myself. That's three. So we'll do... Where is it? Where is it? Bubble. Bubble. And a cure. Alright. So, with that done out of the way, Osiris begins to ever so slightly levitate above ground. And you sneak a glance at her real quick, and you can see that she appears to be very very agitated and that blue eye of hers is almost shining brighter than it normally is she brings her right hand and her arm across her chest and as she swings her arm outwards she casts her darkness attack on everything in the vicinity not you guys, of course. And as she does that, the waves of darkness go flowing out and they they badger the enemies before you left and right. And as all the energy is coming out, you feel something grab you and lift you into the air. As once you're out of the range of darkness, you see that Osiris has pulled the both of you out of it. And then she looks to you, to the both of you, and says, finish them off. If we leave them alive, this is only going to create problems. As I will reduce Osiris's health. One. After Osiris did that attack, her health has plummeted to a mere 1,716. As the harpies now look like a single pathetic gust of wind will take them out. Y'all good? Yeah. Is that... Whose okay. turn is it? Dravos first? Uh, it's the end of Osiris' turn, but she's telling you and Drava to finish the rest of them off. As in, she's giving you the remainder of her turn. Okay. So, two for me and two for Drava, basically? Yeah. And they're all... They're all close enough to where if you were to use an AoE spell, uh, you'd hit most of them at the same time. Bizarra is AoE, right? Say that again? Is Bizarra AoE? Yeah, it's a cone AoE. Okay. So, I'll do that then. I'll do two Bizarras. Alright. So, let's say that. Wait, which direction did you do it in? I'll do it. Two. Oh, I'm over down at the bottom. I'll do these two, and then those two. Conned. Alright. So the two in front of me and the two above me. Okay. So like that and like that.
Alright, so they're defeated. And then, with Jereva's one of her actions, she is going to use Aroga on these two right here. And then she is going to uh, shout in Yashua's general direction, trying to get his attention. Uh, uh -huh. Yashua, you paying attention? Uh, Yashua is in complete defense mode, so like he has his uh, armor shredder out and just pointing at the enemies, or used to be enemies. Enemy. She's going and to. And I just wave. She's gonna shout at you to jump. Jump. Yep. What about the dragon? I I I wonder. Don't worry, I have a plan. I shrug. All right. I know what your plan is. Dreva is going to air crash towards Yashua, but she is going to have her hands extended for you to grab onto them. Okay. So, when do I jump? <laughs> now. I jump. Alright. So, you jump. Uh, please. No, I'm gonna have Draver roll slide a hand. So you jump, she dashes to you, you jump, she catches you, and then she is going to use the momentum from Air Crash to spin and vertically toss you into the air. To where you have a very clean, clear, and precise shot on the last remaining harpy. Wait, we're killing these harpies? Okay. I didn't say you were killing them. Ah. Alright. You may roll whatever attack you wish to roll. I'm scared. Please don't crit. <laughs> okay, so you do that. Uh... Because you've been tossed sky high into the air, describe how you're performing Hollow Shot. Like you doing a flip, you doing a pose. What's up? Uh, I'm just like in the air, but like upside down, falling head first while I just take my shot. All right, and your shot rings true as it makes contact with the harpy. Her back slams into the wall, and she falls over unconscious. And this battle has been completed. So where is... Awesome. Uh, do I have to roll acrobatics to land? Nah, you don't. Henry starts giggling and starts branding the girl, <laughs> the harpy. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yes, I do. No, you don't. <laughs> I land on top of this rock. We could have a little chaos. Can't go back to her tribe. <laughs> Make my way down. Okay. I... I talk to the dragon to see how he's doing. Bye. Oh, as you do that... Henry runs over to the group. I will give you your... Uh, rewards... After... Uh, what I'm about to say. Because once you do that, and Osiris... Uh, gently floats back down to ground level. You hear a large and, and imposing voice of a woman... Shout in your general direction who and what 
is causing all this noise outside of the entrance to the city. Eek. And... Tell Henry, and this is why we don't get involved with people. And at the mention of that, the session will end for today. Uh, get your fake sponsorships out now, fellas. Buy a Ridge Wallet. I want to get sponsored by Ridge Wallet, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. I, I like it. Gamer subs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, Gamer subs. Alright. And I will now hit the stop recording button.